don't know if any of you have ever experienced it before, but I'm sure if, if, if you live in an apartment before, um, dorms or whatever, you know, then you've probably experienced it. You move and you have an, a neighbor who plays this loud boom, 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 thumping music all night long. Well, you know, you think uh, living in a van or RV, you could kind of avoid that by leaving, but obviously if you're in an RV park or where I am, you know, um, I was in the slot that they assigned, which was the only slot he had available, and it was next to this young guy. Um, some of you have heard the story already, but it got really bad and to the point where I was ready to just leave today. I was ready to just pack up my RV and get the heck out of Dodge. Um, my neighbor is this young guy who is actually, um, I think he's, he's on SSI, but he looks healthy. You know, he's on SSI, so I'm assuming he's got a mental disability or something. I don't know. But he, he gets SSI, and his parents are kind of the ones taking care of him. And they're paying for him to stay at the, um, the RV right next to me. You know, so they're paying us to keep him there because they don't want him in, his, in their house. Which I kind of understand, but he behaves kind of, you know, out there. But anyhow, um, he had gotten this boombox from Rena Center with a really loud bass. And the first night he got it, and that was the first day I moved in that night, he had that thing cranking up, shaking up the whole place the entire night. So the next day, you know, what had happened was one of the other guys told me sometimes he has his um, TV on too loud. And, you know, if there's an issue, let him know. Well, I didn't go out that night because I'm not getting up in the middle of the night and heading out to um, go bang on somebody's door, you know, in that RV park when they all have guns. <laughs> so I, I was like, you know, I'll wait till the next day and I'll have a nice talk with him and say, hey, you know, you were a little loud last night. And um, so, but that was like on a, a weekend. I didn't have to work. And normally, like, uh, during the weekdays, I have to get up, like, really, really early in the morning. Like, before morning to, to get into work. But anyhow, it was, like, uh, 1.30 a.m. He had the music on. Next morning, which was the weekend, I went over and, you know, I banged on his door. And the guy opened up. And um, it wasn't him. So that's when I found out, you know, it wasn't the guy that told me sometimes he has music loud. Let him know. No, it was the guy right next to me. Him and his girlfriend. So then I, I had to go tell the um, the park manager or the you know the owner of the the land. And he said he would you know make the guy stop. So he went and had a talk with him. And uh, because he he had the music on like past one thirty two o'clock in the morning, and I had to get up in a couple of hours to go into work. I'm like. I mean, you know, that would be my normal schedule. So he told him, you know, quiet time is like 9 p.m. on, on back. And um, his parents, you know, he said he would, I mean, the owner said he would kick him out, evict him if he kept doing that. And contacted the parents because they're the one paying his rent. So supposedly that was handled. Then sure enough, about a week or so ago, less than a week ago, it starts up again. So he, he had the booming music, like really loud, you know, um, while I'm trying to go to bed, because I go to bed pretty early. I gotta go to bed by like, you know, nine o'clock or so, because I gotta get up so early. Um, so then he had the music on booming again, and I was like, this is ridiculous. So I tried to call them, you know, the manager, the lot manager had told me to call him whenever this happened. So I tried to call him, but there was no response. Uh, I think this was also, this was at, yeah, this was at 12.30 at night also. He, he likes to play the music, like, really loud. Not during the day, but at 12.30, you know, midnight, past midnight. So, and I have to get up. It's like in the middle of my, my sleep cycle, breaking, breaking apart my cycle. So, anyhow, I tried to call the manager, and he was asleep, so there was no nothing done. Then suddenly, I hear banging on the door, and I hear screaming and the music stops and I assume the manager had gone out to have a talk with him. So the next day at work, which 
I only had like three hours of sleep because um, even though they stopped the music by 2, 2.30, I couldn't get back to sleep. You know how it is, like you, you, you go to sleep and if somebody breaks you in the middle of your cycle, you, you can't get back to sleep. That's what happened. So I had like two and a half, three hours of sleep that night. And it's like all groggy and stuff and even missed a, a meeting at work and stuff because of it. So the um, the park manager texts me and he says, um, you know, he, he, sorry he didn't get my message because he was asleep. Um, but he was going to assume that it was a noise from the neighbor because the other neighbor, it turned out the other neighbor is an old guy who's like disabled. Okay. The dude's like on a walker, on a cane and a walker. Okay. So he was the one who went over to that neighbor, you know, the one next to me and banged on his door and told him to cut the crap out because it was, you know, it's 1.30 in the morning. So then the, um, the park manager assured me it wouldn't happen again. So I was like, all right, look. Um, and he told the he said he told me that the he gave the disabled guy access to the um, power box, the um, circuit breaker, and he could shut it off on that kid if it got loud again. So then I'm like, all right, so maybe this will resolve it. So then last night at like um, 9:30, dude starts it up again. Boom. Boom. It's just a uh, rhythmic, um, you know the music I'm talking about. It's got this boom, boom, boom that, that messes with your heartbeat. So I'm like, this freaking sucks. So then I was like, so I called the, um, the manager one more time and I'm like, look, you got to do something about this shit. <laughs> I have to work. And, um, you know, so then um, uh, five minutes later, everything goes quiet. So I'm like, okay, manager must have went out there and, and dealt with him. So then I'm, I'm like not able to sleep again because now I'm Googling. I'm, I'm looking at Craigslist and Facebook Market for another place to park my RV. This is like last night. So I'm like, I got to get the hell out of Dodge. I can't deal with this. This is going to get me fired. This idiot next door with the loud music is going to get me fired. So... You know, I, I stayed up a couple hours looking and I couldn't find anything. Everything's all booked. Everything's super expensive. It, it's like rent anywhere is like mega, mega expensive. Even parking, trying to park your RV somewhere. And in Florida right now, it's hard to find any parking spots. They're all taken. Everybody's here in Florida, especially the, the snowbirds. And, you know, I also have the limitation of I have to park near my job. I have to park where I can get back and forth to work. So I've been looking and looking and looking and I'm like, man, I can't find anything. I almost bought land out in the middle of nowhere. Um, there's this place called Hollapaw, which is off um, 192. I know, off 192. It's like near Orlando, between Orlando and Melbourne. So, but it's like um, kind of like the compound, but I think it's like privately owned by uh, an association or whatever. But you could buy land there and you supposedly can camp out there. You're not supposed to live out there, but you can camp. They say some people set up um, RVs and campers out there. You know, they go four-wheeling, um, ATVs, and all that other stuff, just like the compound, but it's a gated place. You have to have access. So I almost bought land there on the spot. Uh, I was trying to get in touch with the guy to check out the land, but then he said he couldn't let me look at it because he's in California, and I'm like, well, I don't want to buy it unseen, sight unseen. And I want to make sure I'm not falling for some kind of weird scam or something where people post stuff they don't really own, and they take your money, and you get nothing. So... Anyhow, the I get a call from the um, the manager of where I'm parked right now, and he says he says that the um, supposedly this is what's going on now. He contacted that kid's parents again to let them know point blank. Look, he's going to get evicted. So here's what the plan is supposedly. So we'll see what happens. He, he said that um, that kid every night at 9 p.m. has to have the stereo, the boombox, sitting outside his um, RV for the um, manager to pick up. And if he doesn't have it outside, he's going to shut the power off. So <laughs> that's, what, that's why it went quiet really fast five minutes um, into my call with the manager last night was he shut the power off. He shut the power off for the um, that particular RV, the kid with the boombox. 
and he told the parents what was going on. He said that's what he was going to do, and they agreed with him that that was fine uh, because otherwise he gets evicted. So we'll see what happens. My concern is, you know, I, I told the manager, like, look, I, no weird, I don't want any weird shit happening to my car or anything else, my RV or anything else, because now I got a, the dude has, like, mental issues, and he's pissed off at me, because I'm the one, you know, I mean, all the neighbors are mad and with the noise, but he knows I'm the one, because I'm the one that has to go to work, so, and he's right next to me, I'm the loudest one, but we'll see what happens, the manager said, you know, he's trying to work with me, and he said, um, the dude has been told he has to put his stereo outside, his boom box, for the manager to take up every night, or the power goes off, and then he can get it back in the morning, you know, because he can play it as loud as he wants in the day, I really don't care, I don't care about loud noise and stuff during the day and stuff, it's when I'm trying to go to sleep, especially when I have to go to work the next morning, so we'll see what happens, as for buying that land, you know, I, I had considered buying that land, but it's got all these rules and stipulations. Like, you can't really live out there, even though I think some people... I don't know if people are living out there because there's camps that look, from the satellite image, like kind of semi-permanent camps. But they say you can't build anything with a foundation. You can't have anything permanent. I'm like, what good is your owning your own land if you can't even build on it? This is ridiculous. The cost of renting or buying a place that's already built is too expensive. Getting land when you can find it, even in a swamp, they won't let you build and live out there and it, you can own it so I'm like you know I'm gonna hold off on owning that land and uh, still trying to figure out how I'm gonna uh, stabilize my living situation where I am right now you know it's really not the most stable but it's the most stable I've been you know some people are wondering some people have been lost uh, this channel or whatever wondering what's going on with me but I'm currently living in a junkyard that's kind of also a campground, an RV campground. That's what it's officially designated as. And um, the reason I chose this spot was cost. It's uh, one of the cheapest in the area and also near my job. There's cheaper. There's actually better places that are cheaper than this in Florida. But they're like in Okeechobee or something, which would be 300 miles from my job. <laughs> so, you know, or Orlando or something, which would be a hundred miles away from my job. So, you know, I wanted something that was close to work um, and also where I didn't have to move every couple months or every couple days, whatever, at certain campgrounds where you go to because they're all booked up. So, I, you know, I want this to really work, even though it's costing money. It obviously costs more money to live in an RV when you're paying for parking than it does in a van. But um, because my job situation is semi-stable right now uh, and, you know, child support has been reduced, although they're trying to up my um, student loans, you know, trying to garnish my wages and taxes and everything else for student loans. And they've increased the amount again, saying all these late fees and penalty fees and transfer fees, new service fees. The whole student loan thing is like a big giant scam. But anyhow... Um, that's where we're at. So if I look kind of exhausted or, or a little bit annoyed or whatever, it's because I haven't been getting sleep. The, so the dude has his music on right now really loud, and I don't care because I'm not there. But even though it was there, I, you know, it's annoying for me because it's like boom, 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 not stop. It's like he doesn't work. So I don't know what he, he just sits there and he, I guess, smokes weed or whatever and listens to the loud music all day long that's what he does so I just basically ignore it during the day but at night we'll see what happens you know come come nighttime come quiet time so I'm on my way to actually walk again um, trying to trying to get in three at least three days of exercise every week you know, three or four days I exercise every day at work because there's like stairs and stuff and I try to make myself climb them you know whenever possible and I also try to park far away, like when I go shopping or something, I try to park at the edge of the parking lot or far out so that I force myself to walk. Um, but today I'm, I'm going to try to go, you know, basically somewhere where I can walk and, and um, be out in nature just to clear my head and, um, you know, reassess the situation again. But I am looking right now um, for land or a house. Basically, I need some stability, 
And some of you are wondering, what, what the heck happened to moving to Thailand? There's also the complications that came up, partially with COVID, partially with immigration. Um, trying to immigrate to Thailand with my wife is an issue. So I'm starting to lean more towards um, retiring in America, but traveling in Thailand and, and you know Asia and maybe even elsewhere if I can save enough money. Um, that might be a safer route. The, the other thing was um, one of the doctors told me, you know, I might want to consider Thailand. See, Thailand no longer has like connections with the United States military. Like they closed the bases and stuff. So there's no military services or VA over there. But he was telling me Philippines, the, the Philippines has a VA hospital. So he said, you should consider retiring in the Philippines. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking into that, but you know, the whole point of going to Thailand to retire is that's like my birthplace. <laughs> I'm going there to die. So, you know, I'm like, I don't know if I want to really go and live in the Philippines, but it may be an option. I'll have to look into it and see how much it would cost. But if I went to the Philippines, I would still have access to the VA, you know, the VA hospital and stuff there. And they speak English in the Philippines. You know, they speak English very well over there. So that's an option potentially, but for now, my, my, my immediate plan is to kind of try to stay where I am if, if I can deal with, well, you know, the, the park manager said they're trying to expand the park, so they're going to try to open up a new slot in a different area. And, I, you know, it might be another month or two before they get it done because they got to, you know, do all the, the, the electrical wiring and all the other stuff that has to be done and clear the spot and everything else to prep a new parking spot because they're trying to expand. He, he wants to expand it and have more people paying. It's like land is worth a lot of money. You know, if you own land and if you designate it as um, an RV spot, you know, campground, you got you got to clear it with the city and pay the taxes and all that, and then um, install septic systems and electrical wiring. It has to you know be the code and all this other stuff. But once you get all this stuff, you can make money off your land. You don't even have to have a building. You can just like people have to pay, and the the rent around here is expensive. You know, depending on where you are in Florida and how popular the area is. I've seen it anywhere. I think the lowest I've seen it in Florida is roughly $450 a month up to nearly $2,000 a month just to park your RV. Can you imagine that? You have to rent a spot for $2,000 to park your RV in Florida in, in, in certain areas. That's ridiculous. But that's how it is. And yeah, I just thought I'd let you guys know that's what's going on. I am... Um, trying to stick with the diet as best as I can. I know a lot of people saying I'm still eating too much rice. Um, I'm within the guidelines. You know, I, I looked up um, how many carbs there are in one cup of rice. And um, it says there's only like 30 something, 40, I think 34 or 43 or something, you know, in, in one cup of rice. So I can have like a cup or a cup and a half every meal because uh, the dietitian says I can do that. But also when I Google it, you know, that's what the, the, normal, the normal consensus seems to be that you should have a certain number of carbs, a certain number of um, um, yeah, protein and, you know, fibers and things like that. So I think I'm staying within the amount. Um, I've been checking my tummy and I don't know, maybe I'm eating a little too much. <laughs> I, I, I'm, it'll be interesting to weigh in next time because I'm wondering if I'm um, not losing weight. You know, if, if because I, I've increased the, um, I've increased a lot of veggies and a little bit of meat, so I might have to cut back a little bit for like dinner, lunch, and dinner. But definitely need the rice to keep me from getting hungry all the time. Otherwise, I eat and then within 30 minutes or an hour, I feel like I'm starving. Because I'm so used to, you know, I'm used to having, I normally have about three to five cups of rice every meal. That's what I normally have. Three to five cups. I'm down to one cup, one and a half cups. So, somebody says, uh, I'm reading real quick here. Janice says, maybe the vegetables are making me bloat. Maybe, I don't know. The, the one way to check will be once I, um, tonight I'm going to do a, a sugar reading, you know, the glucose reading with the glance thingy. I'm going to try to do it before dinner to see what my numbers look like. See if it's like within normal range. 
I only got down to normal once, and that was like about three or four days ago, right before dinner. So we're going to try it again uh, today, right before dinner, to see what it looks like. And um, the other readings have still been high. I'm still on the high side, but not high like crazy high. You know, just slightly over, um, which, well, slightly to me is slightly, but to some of you, it might be like really high. <laughs> Like you're supposed to be between between like 80 and 130 or so. My my lowest so far, other than the uh, the one time I went normal right before dinner, my lowest so far, right, you know, at, at the time that designated time, was like 154, which is actually, you know, about 20 something, about 20 or so, 16 or 20 points above what it should be. Oh, uh, you know, so. I'm on the high end, but you know, these numbers aren't exact. They actually go up and down. All right. I'm at my designation. So internet probably going to go out. So I'm going to go ahead and log out. But, um, you know, you guys might be getting cutouts right now because I don't, this area here doesn't have good internet. Well, thank you all for joining me. I'm going to read your, your comments, uh, later, but, um, I'm basically at a park with the bridge to walk on going to try to burn off some more calories get my numbers down I appreciate all your suggestions all of you uh, making suggestions I do read them and take them into account and also they might be useful to other people who are reading especially stuff on food like what you can try eating <laughs> you know things that you can do like somebody suggested some desserts and stuff I normally don't like um, uh, what is it cottage cheese but supposedly that's good you know so I'm I'm looking into that, like, to make sandwiches instead of using uh, mayonnaise. Although, w one of the things I'm trying to do, which uh, some people are saying I'm, 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 I'm going to fail. <laughs> one of the things I've been trying to do is not change the diet too much. Like, um, like when I make a sandwich, I'm still trying to make it using regular mayonnaise if I can. But, you know, mayonnaise is really high in fat and other bad stuff. But I'm trying to use regular stuff instead of using cottage cheese, which some people are saying I should do. Let me go ahead and read uh, your, your comments here real quick before I sign out. Kiara, good to see you on here, Renegade. I hope you are feeling better, Renegade. Um, Farmer uh, 33K wants to know what I do for a living. I'm a janitor <laughs> at a space agency. So, you know, it's interesting because there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, there's a lot of interesting things happening in space. And, you know, it's interesting because I'm there. <laughs> I'm like, of, of all the, the things in my life, um, I find it interesting that I'm actually, never in a million years did I think I'd be involved with um, the space program like this, uh, part of it. And actually, you know, some of the people that are working on um, sending man back to, the, to Mars, you know, not back, but for the first time to Mars, back to the moon, actually, going back to the moon first and then Mars. But it's interesting because I'm like, this is actually kind of cool. <laughs> Kira says, the man, you should give me access to power. Uh, no, because I, I think you have to go. I don't know where the circuit breaker is. I think you might have to go inside his house or, or a little garage or something. But the other issue is I really don't want to be the one that shuts the power off for that guy. Uh, you know, he's got mental issues and he already hates me. You know, he knows I'm the one that... that um, they're, the reason they're pushing for him to shut the power off, and if he thinks that I'm the one shutting the power off, then it, you know it's gonna it's gonna get violent. It's gonna, I mean, it almost got violent the other night. I was laying there, and I was like, I'm ready to kill the guy. He was driving me nuts. If you've not been able to sleep because of a neighbor doing that constantly, even after they've been told by the landlord and something, they continue to do it. it, it and then you know the the landlord was telling me the guy has mental issues, and I'm like, yeah, I kind of figured that. And you guys know how I feel about people who have mental issues. The last time this happened, I quit my job, you know, the Walmart one, because the guy had mental issues and was trying to cause accidents to get me killed. He was doing stuff on purpose to, to try to make me get killed, like have stuff fall over and collapse on top of me and things like that. And people say, why do you know, why do you quit the job? I quit the job because I know what it's like dealing with mentally ill people. Believe me, I know firsthand. So, you know, when I can leave that situation, I try to leave it. Um, you know, the landlord says the, the guy is safe. The kid is safe. But, you know, they're safe until they're not. <laughs> Mentally ill people, they don't think the same way. And, you know, and 
I'm, uh, you know, he's mentally ill. I can tell that's why he gets the, the disability. But, you know, it, it, with him being in conflict with me with the noise, I think when the slot opens up, I may ask to move. I may want to move to the new slot, potentially, unless unless this situation with that kid next door with the noise is normalized and no weird stuff happens because I don't mind being back there, you know, moving up front. I could be putting myself in to another situation. It's like you, you, you often assume that the grass is greener on the other side or the other option. But then when you get there, you say, shit, it's a nightmare. <laughs> Anyhow, I am going to go ahead and sign out. Hey, Mo Bang, good to see you on here, Timothy. Janice uh, says uh, the vegetables are, are bloating, possibly. I've been eating a lot of vegetables. I think I might try to... Um, what I've been doing with the vegetables, I've just been throwing everything together. So, you know, because it's easier. But also, I figure I get nutrients from all sorts of different sources. But I'm thinking that I might start um, throwing in, um, whatchamacallit, uh, bamboo shoots and stuff. I'm looking at this park where I am where I'm going to start my walk, and I see that I'm parked by a bunch of homeless people. <laughs> Maybe this isn't the best spot to park. <laughs> Not that I think that homeless people are bad, but if my car's left here by itself and there's no one to watch it, it may not be the best spot to park. I think I'm going to go park at a different spot because, you know, I think it's it's tempting fate to to park your car to go for a walk, a long walk, and leaving it right by where the homeless people camp out. I don't think homeless people are necessarily bad people, but um, sometimes they could be tempted to break your window and see what they can find inside. So, you know, um, being here is probably, I, oh my God, there's so many homeless here. There's at least, there's like at least there's at least like 10 or 12 that I can easily spot that are homeless here. Either they're homeless or there's something going on here. Okay, there's a walk. Port Authority. What the hell? There's something going on here that's not homeless or they're giving stuff to the homeless. I see numbers. I see bags of stuff. I wonder if they're all getting ready to go on a walk. I think I'm here to do my walk at this park, and they're going to have a big walk at the park. But I'm parked by other cars now. I'm going to park by other cars. So that I'm not by myself right next to all the homeless people. Yeah, there's something going on here. I think there's um, going to be a big event. Maybe if you guys want to see, I'll film it for you. If you want to, if you guys want to see my walk, we can walk and talk. But I'm gonna go ahead and sign out. I will go ahead and film. Um, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Well, thank you all for joining me. Um, do you appreciate all the the suggestions and stuff? I do try to read them and I try to follow them if if they'll fit in with my schedule and you know my plans. But for the most part, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to be as normal as possible because I'm trying to, this is not just do this temporarily. This is going to be, you know, hopefully my new lifestyle. So if I have to substitute, you know, weird stuff for rice, I don't think I can live with that. <laughs> so until next time, everyone take care. God bless you all. Stay safe. Bye-bye now.